guys, my name's Eric. Thanks for stopping by and checking out my video. Today I'm going to show you how to make sous vide style pork chops. Now pork chops is something that I've always loved, but when I was a kid I wasn't really fond of it. All growing up, uh, you know, through uh, grade school, high school, whenever my parents would make pork chops, they were listening uh, to the USDA recommendation uh, of cooking it to 160 degrees in order to make sure that you're killing all the harmful bacteria. The only problem with such a lean piece of meat, cooking it up to 160 degrees completely dries it out. And when it's dried out, it has no flavor and it gets tough and it's no fun eating it unless you put a lot of gravy or some kind of sauce on it. So today, cooking it with the sous vide machine, I'm going to cook it at 144 degrees Fahrenheit. Now don't worry because in 2011, the USDA actually came out and downgraded their original estimate of 160 degrees for pork. They lowered it to 145 degrees. And even though I'm cooking it at 144, I'm just one degree under and letting it cook for around uh, an hour to 90 minutes at that 144 is gonna kill any harmful bacteria, but still gonna maintain a very juicy, delicious pork chop. I got six boneless pork chops here, and I'm just gonna season them with a very basic mixture of salt, pepper, uh, garlic powder, and onion powder. I'm gonna put them in a bag with a little bit of some fresh herbs, some garlic cloves, and some thyme, and that's it. I'm gonna stick them in here. You wanna cook them anywhere from an hour at the least, all the way up to around three hours at the most. I'm gonna go for 90 minutes, that seems to be the perfect time, and these are gonna be absolutely delicious. Now you have three options. If you want to cook them on the rare side, and you know, this with the sous vide machine, you can do it without worried about getting sick because cooking it for at least an hour, even at a lower temperature, the bacteria is not going to be able to survive. So if you want to try it rare, you could cook it at 136 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour to three hours. They're going to be extremely juicy, probably the juiciest pork chop you ever tried, uh, and they're going to be kind of slippery, wet texture. And to me, I, that kind of turns me off. So I'm gonna skip the rare. I'm gonna cook it medium, which is 144 degrees Fahrenheit. They're gonna be much more tender at that higher temperature, but still uh, hold a lot of that juice that's cooked out at the higher temperature. Now, if you're just paranoid or you like everything cooked well done, you can also cook it sous vide at 158 degrees Fahrenheit for uh, an hour to three hours. And it's still gonna be juicier than the traditional way, but it's, uh, it's gonna be a little bit drier. So you can pick uh, you know, what temperature uh, you want depending on the consistency. So what I've done is I've just mixed equal parts of salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna season these. This isn't rocket science, guys. You know how this works. We're just gonna season these real good on both sides. I'm gonna let these uh, sit out on the counter for a few minutes while I get my sous vide machine up to speed. And like I said, I'm gonna turn this on. I already got it pre-programmed 144 degrees for 90 minutes or an hour and a half. So let me fire that up. Let me flip these over and uh, continue seasoning them. And that's it guys. I mean, this is such a basic, simple recipe. I picked these pork chops up because they were on sale for $1.99 a pound. So I got all six of these for just over $5. And I mean, for the price of a Happy Meal, I could feed our whole family some delicious pork chops, some of the most delicious pork chops they've ever had in their, in their life. So that's it guys, I'm gonna let these sit. I'm gonna wait for this to come up to temperature and uh, we'll be back in a second when I got these in the bag ready to go and I'll show you the next step. All right guys, welcome back. Now normally I have uh, all my sous vide videos, I've been vacuum sealing these in food saver bags, but you know what, this is such a short cook, I'm just gonna use a regular Ziploc freezer bag. So don't feel like you need an expensive food saver system to use sous vide if you don't have a food saver. Uh, most of the time a heavy duty Ziploc bag will work fine. So I got two separate bags here. This one I put the three chops in, the other one's all ready to go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a couple garlic cloves you don't have to chop them, I'll just take this, the skin off it and just stick some garlic cloves in there. As it sits here, it's going to cook in its own juice a little bit. I'm going to add a pad of butter on each side and then I'm just going to add some leaves, some fresh thyme on top. 
We'll flip this over, put the butter, same thing. That's it. So real quick, easy, basic. Now, if you've never done the sous vide without a food saver bag, what you're gonna do is you're gonna seal the bag, just leave a little section open, because as you dunk it in the water here, you're gonna want to let all that air kind of escape through that little slot, and then it's gonna kind of seal it itself. I'll show you right now, because it, I just beeped a few minutes ago, five minutes ago. So I'm gonna show you here. We stick it in. And see, it wants to float a little bit, but as you force it under, you'll see it, it'll start to push the air out. And then just that last bit, squeeze that last bit of air out, and that's it. Just clip it to the side somehow. Not very complicated, but this is the great thing about sous vide cooking. Okay, so that side's open. Let's push that down. It always seems to want to float. Sometimes people put a fork, not a fork, a spoon or something like that, a knife in there, just to kind of weigh it down. But usually you just need a little push with something just to get it down there. Boom! 144 degrees, an hour and a half. Look at how easy this is. I mean, it, it couldn't be any more basic. Now, when we take it out in around an hour and a half, it's going to be pale. It's going to be fully cooked. It's going to look horrible. So uh, you can either throw it on the barbecue grill for 90 seconds to two minutes on each side, get it nice and crispy. But you know what? I don't want to mess with that right now. I'm just going to put it in a very hot frying pan with a little bit of butter and a little bit of olive oil and mix some of the gravy that's made in these bags with the melted butter and the thyme and the garlic and just spin it around for a couple minutes so it's nice and crisp and we'll be back in a little bit and I'll show you when these are done. We'll be back in a minute guys. Alright guys welcome back. It's been around 15 minutes. I just wanted to show you the butter's already beginning to melt. You can see it there. The pork chops are turning a different color. They're just starting to season. We got a good hour left. You know so I'm just gonna let them do their thing. They look absolutely wonderful. But in the meantime, time for a beer review. I got an hour to kill and I am thirsty. It's a hot day. Carl Strauss, the San Diego Brewery, open since 1989. Big Barrel Double IPA. I tried one of their uh, one of their beers with my last video for sous vide carnitas. Please check it out when you get a chance. And it was really good. So I saw this in the store and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna try another beer theirs since that one was so delicious so and the fact 89 is when they opened that was the year of my first uh, Harley Davidson motorcycle 89 Softail Springer so I like that bit about it too so let's see I don't know much about it I just looked it up online they said it's a double IPA Oop, I hope I didn't pour too quickly so it's supposed to have a little bit of hints of grapefruit and berries that's all I know about it I know it's pretty uh, heavy alcohol content. They said around 9% alcohol. So let me take a whiff. I do smell some fruit, but it's not overpowering. Maybe it smells more like grapefruit. It's a little sour. Maybe a little bit of lemon. Cheers to some pork chop, guys. Thanks for watching my video. Again, I appreciate it. Ooh, <laughs> a foamy head. Okay. Fruity flavor, as you swallow, it's got a, a hoppy kick to it for sure. But I guess you can expect that from a double IPA. It seems like it's got a little bit above average carbonation. It's a little bit bitter after it lingers for a second. Starts off really fruity, hoppy in the middle, and then gets a little bitter. Let's try it again. Yeah, it's good. Not bad at all. I've had a few IPAs that are really bitter, really strong. This is remarkably drinkable for something that's 9% alcohol. So I'm sure it packs a little bit more powerful punch than people are used to, particularly if they're not used to drinking double IPAs. And on a hot summer day like today, they down two or three of these. Might hit them like a sledgehammer a couple hours down the road. So anyway, guys, I'm going to enjoy this beer. 
I'll be back in an hour. When these are done, I'll take them out. I'll show you how they look like. We'll get them fried up in the pan and we'll be having some delicious sous vide pork chops shortly. Uh, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys, welcome back. It's got four minutes left, so it's been in here almost a full hour and a half. So I'm just gonna turn it off. We're gonna take one out. I just want you guys to see how it's gonna look like when it comes out. It doesn't look very appetizing, but it's perfectly cooked. You can see there's a little bit of juice there. Mm-hmm. Man, I can really smell that, the garlic and the thyme. So here we go. I'm gonna put it on uh, some paper towels. I'm gonna blot it off, dry it off. I'm gonna save, save this garlic because I'm gonna saute it with this garlic and a little bit of this juice at the very end. I'm gonna definitely save this. But yeah, all you wanna do is just dry it up with a paper towel. Remove uh, the herbs. I'm going to throw that in the pan just to uh, give it some flavor. Ooh, look at that big garlic. Yeah, you want to dry it off completely because it's not going to be able to take on a good sear in a hot frying pan if, uh, if it's not dry. So just let it sit there for a few minutes. It's fine. It's perfectly cooked. I'm going to heat up the pan really hot. I mean, not super, super high, but medium high. Uh, you want to make sure it's nice and high, put a little bit of olive oil. We're going to throw these uh, pork chops on there, two minutes on each side. Uh, halfway through, we'll add some butter and a little bit of this herbs and garlic and just spoon it over it. I'll show you how it's done. But uh, we'll let these dry out for a few seconds and we'll be back in one second to show you the next step. All right, guys, welcome back. I got a frying pan here on, like I said, medium high heat. I put a little bit of olive oil in there. It's very hot. And we're just going to throw these pork chops. 90 seconds to uh, two minutes each side. We just want to crisp them up. They're perfectly cooked through and through. I'm just going to do three at a time. I don't want to crowd them. You can kind of move them around too as you cook. Oops. Like I said, you're just going to cook them a little bit here. Uh, I'll flip them in around a minute and a half. I'm going to add some of that spice and mixture at the end. You can also, too, if they're particularly thick, you can kind of fry them on the sides, too. See, they're already getting a nice color. That's all we really want to do here. They're perfectly cooked, but they just kind of look unappetizing. So we're just going to spin them around in this frying pan. I'll be back in a second once I flip these are closer to being done and I'll show you how it's supposed to look. Alright guys, I just flipped them. You want to add a little bit of butter. It's going to melt relatively fast. So you might want to turn it down just a little bit. That's going to give it some nice flavor. We'll continue cooking those for like maybe another Oh, I don't know, 90 seconds or so. In around a minute, I'm going to pour that juice and those spices back in and the garlic just to kind of let it glaze and add some of that flavoring to those chops. Oh, man. It smells wonderful. So I'll be back in a second and show you. All right, guys. It's just been around 90 seconds. I'm going to... Pour that juice with the garlic, throw those herbs in there. Just gonna add a little bit of that flavor at the end here. Whoa. Let it go for like another 20 seconds. Flip it over one last time. Oh man, it smells wonderful. All right, guys, they are done. Let me turn this off. I'll put it on the cutting board. We'll check how they look like inside and how they taste in just a second. All right, guys, welcome back. Boy, I just sliced into this. Look how juicy it is. It's perfectly cooked. I don't know if I can, uh, if I can demonstrate this on the camera. I'll try to just show you guys how wonderful, juicy 
this is I can't tell if you can tell in the can when I squeeze it you see the juices unbelievably juicy I gotta try a little piece oh my god you know what you really haven't had a pork chop unless it's cooked this medium condition and if you're like me growing up these things pork chops were always cooked so much they were so dry they were so hard they so lacked flavor cooking it sous vide like this for an hour to an hour and a half just look at the juice so flavorful so tender no worry about getting sick or anything like that this is really how pork should be cut uh, or should be cooked so i highly recommend this guys thanks again for watching uh, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, check out some of my other cooking and uh, smoking videos, and uh, I appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.